the geysers geothermal field in california is the largest geothermal region in the entire world and it is a hidden threat to Californians and the entire West Coast. Now the geysers are the world's largest geothermal field containing a complex of 18 geothermal power plants drawing steam from more than 350 wells located in the Mayacamas Mountains, 72 miles north of San Francisco. And the volcanic complex is called the Clear Lake Complex. Now this area is historic, and let's get to some of the historical information quickly. For about 12,000 years, Native American tribes built steam baths at the geysers and used the steam and hot water for healing purposes and cooking. When European Americans first entered the area, six Indian tribes inhabited the area around the geysers. Three bands of Pomo people, two bands of Wapo people, and the Lake Miwok people. The Wapo also can collected sulfur, which they called Tiki, and the Wapo village named Tiki Na Sonanoma. Take sulfur and well contain water. Now the geysers were first seen by European Americans and named in 1847 during John Fremont's survey of the Sierra Mountains and the Great Basin by William Bell Elliott, who called the area the geysers. Although the geothermal features he discovered were not technically geysers, but fumaroles. Now, these have been subsequently covered up for the use of geothermal energy, making the geysers geothermal field one of the lar it, it is the largest in the world. But there's an imminent threat south of Clear Lake. Clear Lake and the geologic summary here from the Smithsonian tells us that late Pliocene to early Holocene Clear Lake volcanic field in the northern coast ranges contains lava dome co complexes, cinder cones, and mars of basaltic to rhyolitic composition, the westernmost site of the Quaternary Volcanism in California. This volcanic field is far west from the Cascade Range in a complex geologic setting with the San Andreas Transform Fault System, Mount Canocti, a composite dacitic lava dome on the south shore of Clear Lake is the largest volcanic feature. Volcanism has been largely non-explosive with only one major air fall tuff and no ash flows. Now the latest eruptive activity forming Mars and cinder cones along the shores of Clear Lake continued until 10,000 years ago. Yes, and this area has been inhabited well before that. So the natives in this region know what this region does. A large silicic magma chamber provides the heat source for the geysers. Now it's my supposition as a geologist that these geysers, when they heat up and become more active, well, that's indicative of the entire Cascade Range charging. And what I mean by that is they're charging for boom time. Here's Clear Lake, and if we just come south here, you can see the Mercuryville Fault System and all of that volcanic complex. And you can see here the amount of earthquakes that have happened over the last seven days on that fault, the Mercuryville Fault. Dozens, if not hundreds. Now, it's my supposition that that means that there's siliceous magma moving towards the volcanic belt. Now, the eruptive history of Clear Lake Volcanic Field is well studied. And the Clear Lake Volcanics are the result of that. There are multiple groups, one, two, three, and four, and they represent differing time ranges towards more recent. The closer you get to Clear Lake, the closer you get to the eruptive activity. But it's my supposition that Clear Lake is potentially a caldera and a lot of the material has been washed away. But in recent times, we have activity as recent as 10,000 years directly adjacent to the lake. The activity we're seeing now is in the Green Band, which hasn't had any activity for about 300,000 years, according to the scientists. But clearly there's seismic activity happening there, if not volcanic, currently. This is just one of the outliers in the cosmic catastrophe cycle <laughs> that we cannot find. Now, where did that go? 
Boom, it's right here. So 12,900 years ago, there's a flexure point in the 26,000-year precession of the equinoxes where major catastrophes happen. The onset of the Younger Dryas climate catastrophe began right here 12,900 years ago. 39,000 years ago was Heinrich event number four. 65,000 years ago, Heinrich event number six. 117,000 years before present, the terminal substage southeast climate shift. And 144,000 years ago, the Salan climate shift. Now, if we come directly on the other side of the cosmic clock here, 12,900 years later, we are on the flexure point. And 26,000 years ago was the onset of the late Wisconsinian. Now, there is very little known about this cycle. It's on such a grand scale that not many people have studied it. But if we just look at the historical context, for 12,000 years, Native Americans built steam baths at the geysers. And so they were well aware of what happened at Clear Lake in antiquity. And according to the current geologic summary, they're saying that volcanic activity continued until 10,000 years ago. So it, when was it peaking? It was peaking probably back during the Younger Dryas event. In the aftermath, it was a boon to civilization, providing hot waters, fumaroles, sulfur, a place to cook, get warm, and bathe in the natural waters. These are the types of scientific events that we should be learning about and teaching our children. Unfortunately, science is dead, which is why we have the channel to inform you about the geysers, the largest geothermal field in the world, which is becoming ever more active by the moment as we deepen into the magnetic excursion in the grand solar minimum that you're all living. And that's boom to knowledge. Hope you got something out of the video. Share this with like-minded people. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And be safe. That's a boom to the geysers. There they are the Clear Lake Volcanic Complex, called the Geysers. Hasn't been active since the last cosmic catastrophe, but, well, it's getting a little active now. I'll leave you links to the eruptive history of the Clear Lake Volcanic Field to get you up to speed, as well as the Cosmic Clock graphic. Share this with like-minded people. Leave a comment below, and be safe. We love you. That's boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. When the grid goes down, will you be ready? Be safe. No, no.